of you walk the halls at Hempstead High School. None of you sit in the classroom. You have no idea how scary it is. It is scary walking through Hempstead High School. What are you going to do? The abysmal conditions in these schools have resulted in the denial of the basic state constitutional guarantee of a sound, basic education. School board meetings out of control, crumbling buildings, overcrowding, broken bathrooms, dirty cafeterias. Hempstead is a bedroom community. The parents and concerned citizens and taxpayers and so forth seem to be asleep. The $5.1 million that our auditors have found misappropriated. It is unheard of, uh, it is unmanageable. When you have a class of 40, now you're talking about 50, close to 60. An abysmal 37% graduation rate, less than half the national average. I don't have any classes, nothing. So you've been coming to school and doing what? Nothing. Corruption. I believe that's the heart. It's been going on for 30 years. Why are there no textbooks, no workbooks, no curriculum guides? Hempstead High School on Long Island is one of the lowest graduation rates in the nation, and it is about to enter what is called receivership. And that means it has one year to turn around all that failure. We are not going to do business as usual as they used to be here in Hempstead High School. An esteemed educator known for fixing struggling New York City schools is ready to roll up his sleeves at one of the worst performing school districts on Long Island. Island, and there's opposition. A Hasidic Jew is not somebody you're going to find, you know, in Hempstead. And the children will be my, like my children. Who negotiated the contract of the superintendent? You should let the superintendent answer some questions. Because you don't want to hear anything anybody wants to say. It's going to end. The corruption will end. You can't do that. You can't do that. You can't do that. You can't do that. Good morning, everyone. A new school year and a new start in Hempstead, Long Island. I want to welcome everyone back. Welcome back. Where teachers and staff gathered to meet their newly hired superintendent, Dr. Shimon Warrenker. A deeply religious educator with a record of turning around urban schools brought in to transform a deeply troubled suburban public school system, one of the worst performing in America. <laughs> Our children are hurting and they need a lot of help. Warren Kerr, the latest leader in a revolving door of fired and hired administrators. No one lasting very long in a school district where good intentions often dissolve into chaos. I think it's only right before we vote on this that we receive the full report right. before we vote on it. So, Madam Vice President, would you like to pull it or do you want me to pull it? I'm not pulling it. Well, I'm pulling it. Did you just call me stupid? Yes, you did. Yes, she did. Oh, okay, I just want to make sure. Infighting by elected trustees who run the district, paralyzing progress for decades. Frequent clashes on display in public. It's time for civilized demonstrations. They had one goal in mind and that was to rip this district apart. Yes! That is the agenda that have brought in the new leadership. It's time for us to wake up. All right, right now you talk about civilized people. If you're talking about we want to work together, we are not doing that. 
and it's time for us to start working together. And anytime you sit here, you shut up. Anytime you sit here and you're talking about disrespect, I have never seen anything so disrespectful in my life. If you notice, uh, there are three changes. We don't have anyone up on the days. We're all one. You need to feel empowered and you need to feel inspired just as much as children need it. Well, I think what the school district requires or two basic things. Um, one is a lot of love. I think uh, the children, the adults may not have felt that love. And love is a unifying force, meaning it's a sense of a community. There's a divide um, and, and folk need to feel that um, they're joined in common purpose for the children. Love, a simple enough recipe for success, and yet not enough to change student outcomes in Hempstead. For decades, the school district has languished, graduating just a fraction of its senior class, 50% in a good year. How we talk to our children has a tremendous impact at every level. And it can empower and inspire, why? Because we're here to make this a better world. That's why you joined this profession. That's why you work at Hempstead. We're here to make this a better world. This is our mission in Hempstead. We're gonna empower, we're gonna inspire, and we're gonna make this a better world. All of us. I'm not gonna make any assumptions that I know everything, which I don't. But what I do know, I will share. And when I don't know, I will ask. From my experience, transformative work takes about four years. But I, I believe it can be done. The support of God Almighty, I think we're going to do okay. He came in with a powerhouse resume as a reformer, a Harvard doctorate in education, a stint as a U.S. Army intelligence officer, a record of turning around some of the most violent New York City schools. His original model of education creates teams of teachers and rewards the most successful with higher pay. I know there are a lot of concerns here. There's a lot of fear. I want you to lose that fear. I want you to be yourself. I want you to be happy and confident walking into the schools. And notice the kind of vision I'm bringing about empowerment and inspiration. How do you do that? Well, it begins through contract. None of you have a contract right now. And it's outrageous. Not on his resume, but written all over his message, his roots, the son of a labor organizer, and his faith. As a young man, Warren Kirk converted to Judaism, joining the ultra-Orthodox Hasidic Lubavitcher sect. Notice I'm not a very tall, big, imposing human being. I'm a short Jew. <laughs> and yet, I've been given some tough assignments in my life. And I didn't do it by carrying a huge stick or hurting people or getting rid of people. No, first is to support, provide empathy, be humble, and take courageous stands when I need to. All of you have a great year. God bless you. It was an odd fit to lead a school district that's almost all black and Hispanic, and yet Warrenker was selected in the district's first ever nationwide search, narrowly voted in by a sharply divided school board where the power struggle and ethnic divide is often very loud and contentious. conversation back and forth. The superintendent created on, five on. committees and this is the behavior that hasn't let us Do work not get together. Upset, guys. Do not this get is upset. the example that we should not be putting on students. What I'm seeing is really just 
I just never imagined it to be like this. I want, I want to know why this is happening. Everybody here on the board is here for us, for the students, to help the community, and you can't agree between each other. I don't know why that is. If you can't agree with each other, then how are you going to help us, the students? This is the seed that you plant. The state and everybody else, that Hempstead School District is the worst. You know, all of this nonsense has got to stop. And it's got to stop. He's an esteemed educator known for fixing struggling New York City schools, and he's ready to roll up his sleeves at one of the worst performing districts on Long Island. But he's facing opposition. The board majority took the liberty to sort of kind of silence the community. This is going to be the new superintendent, and you have no say. I don't have the proof that his, his program that he's trying to bring towards Hempstead, which is the New American Initiatives, has been a success in the um, city schools. You have to understand that this is a suburban area, so I don't want to feel like our district that I'm a graduate of is the guinea pig for an experiment. Our kids deserve better, and uh, again, to be frank, to be honest, he may not be here pretty soon. Opponents rallied against his selection before he even got started. The kids in Hempstead had been suffering for decades. And I've had experience in turning around schools, in school communities, and a very successful experience. And I think I could make a difference. Como esta, señora? Buenos dias. He also came to Hempstead with a not-so-secret weapon in a district where more than a third of the 8,000 students are just learning to speak English. Shimon Warren, ¿cómo están? No puedo darle la mano solo a los hombres. Born in Chile, Warrenker's native language is Spanish. So I've got two rules. You know what the first rule is? No? Do whatever will make your parents proud. Hagan lo que van a hacer a sus padres orgullosos, okay? Rule number two, don't do what will not make them proud. His plan was to make a plan, a four-year strategy. The only way we can come up with a plan of action is if we listen to the community and hear what teachers, parents, students are saying about the school and the school's district. And this way we get the information so that we can make an, an analysis, create priorities, and create a strategic plan. Beginning with a personal inspection of every school. When I came to do, to do a visit, they had all sorts of garbage on top of the lockers. How many superintendents had actually walked the buildings and inspected the classrooms, the toilets, faucets, everything? He said, none, you're the first one. Many of them crumbling. Warrenker's walkthrough revealed leaks, neglect, decay, and overcrowding, made worse by a flood of recent immigrants. But 1,600 students were exiled to moldy and at times vermin infested portable classrooms used for decades. A nearby middle school shows outward signs of wear, has no auditorium, and a shocking turnover rate for teachers. It's a school where roughly 80% of the eighth graders failed to meet state standards in 1999 tests. High dropout rates and absenteeism. Deteriorating buildings, too, were just forced to close. Consistently low academic performances. Even an accurate headcount had eluded past administrators. I'll be one of the better if you ask them what is the exact attendance in Hempstead right now, they couldn't tell you. I want to count. Okay, get a head count. Literally, and, and get a visual, all right? on exactly how many children we have. So had student class schedules and transcripts. This next story brings new meaning to the phrase missing the mark. Grades for hundreds of Long Island high school students were never recorded. The book is missing with all of our transcripts and that most of our grades are missing too. And I'm missing classes like I don't have an English class. I'm actually missing uh, English 12 and earth science. For the past four years I've had a messed up schedule. So right now, I only have one class. So far you have one class? What does that mean? Uh, they've only scheduled me one class for the next first semester. What's your class that you're scheduled for? Gym. Security was also wanting. The first two days were quiet. The third day, we already had a uh, gang initiation. The very next school day, we had a shooting at the back gate. And, you know, this is only 
week one. We didn't have enough security aids to cover all areas of the building. The camera system was outdated. The footage was grainy. We had a number of cameras that were down. One thing to possibly look at is maybe uh, upgrading our surveillance cameras, like where they're located yeah. <clears throat> and which ones are working. We have $9 million sitting, waiting for us to use them to do technological upgrades. Funding grants for long overdue improvements had gone untapped for lack of follow-up for years. Dysfunction often made news. The public institution responsible for posting this summer reading list with a slew of errors is Hempstead Public Schools. There are more than 30 misspellings, misnomers, and grammatical errors. It's debatable, but perhaps the worst mistake on the list is in regards to F. Scott Fitzgerald's classic, The Great Gatsby. It's listed as The Great Gypsy. Warren Kerr recruited two new principals. I don't think anything could have prepared me for just how challenging Hempstead is. Pretty much anybody that I spoke to uh, when I said that I was um, considering Hempstead, um, first it was kind of um, people cringed, you know, like why, why would you, you know, go to Hempstead? Haven't you read the stories and, and heard about the dysfunction, the chaos? I believe each of us has a calling and I've always been drawn to serve where most needed and there was no clearer need uh, in the immediate area than Hempstead School District. And at the middle school? I was a middle school principal in the South Bronx. I was about two miles away from Dr. Warrenker and turned one of the most failing schools in the city around to a top performing school in a matter of two and a half years. I think you're going to see change in the district. I think that the children are going to get the materials that they need, that the teachers are going to get the professional development that has been so lacking. Many of those teachers scared into silence, they say, for years. The first time in years that we were asked about what we wanted, what did we need in order to make sure the children were successful. No other superintendent in the district had ever asked the teachers anything about what was what was happening in the district. Hope, a chance for a change. And then Warren Kerr set his sights on long rumored corruption, asking a leading forensic audit firm to look at how a more than $200 million budget was being spent. One of the things that the Hempstead has been known for is a lot of corruption. And uh, this is one area in which we want to bring forensic auditors and make sure that we root out that corruption so that the money is actually going to the children. Have you found any evidence yourself of that yet? So far, there appears to be evidence, um, but those investigations are ongoing. It's really sad. It's really sad, but um, the mission of the board is to protect the, the well-being of the students, the taxpayers. Uh, There's been not be used for too long. Hempstead Public Schools is the largest employer in Hempstead. And in some cases, it's been used in a way as an employment agency and not necessarily as an educational institution. Again. The focus has not been making sure that the children have a great education, although everyone will say that that is their focus. But when you see the facts on the ground, it's obvious that it's not. And it wasn't just suspected financial sleight of hand. Academic numbers were also in doubt. District leaders admitted to fudging grades and promised to stop after a 2014 state review found failing grades were routinely rounded up so students would artificially pass. The grades of more than 1,200 Hempstead High School students were altered during the 2012-2013 school year. But I heard there were stories of, of grade tampering, teachers taking Regents exams home to change answers and bringing them back the next day, weapons being um, collected but not reported, uh, students not being held accountable. Oh, it's still happening. There's pressure to change grades especially for seniors, to make sure that the graduation rate is higher than it was in the, uh, the, the year prior. We are asked 
by administrators to change the grades directly. Even though they have clearly a failing grade. Correct. They can do simple things like read, follow instructions, do basic math, um, addition, subtraction, forget about multiplication. I'm talking about high school 9th through 12th graders. What's the message about why you're pressured to do this? To improve the graduation rate and to just get the kids out of the school. We are pushed as educators to, to get everyone through. Yeah. Just pass them. Just pass them. Good morning, good morning. So is this mission impossible? Good morning. I don't think anything is impossible. Is it challenging? I would say yes, it is very challenging. I, I would say it's even more challenging when um, the community feels divided. Whether you, know, you, you like me or not, my success is the children's success. But instead of a clear path to this success, reformers were stepping into a cauldron of opposing forces. Let me be clear. I am a member of this board. The superintendent does not direct the board. We hired him. And this back and forth is not, is, is, is not good for relation matters. So I'm not going to sit here and argue with you. And I actually came to meet and discuss. But please, when you're talking to me, be mindful that you're talking to a board member. One who oversees you. This is your first time being a superintendent, I believe? So the board, which consists of five members, and please do not interrupt me. And this is your first time being a board member, too? Hold up, wait a minute. Okay, I, I wait think a minute. Should, I think wait we a minute. have to continue. We wait a minute, continue wait a minute. With the wait a minute, because I would like to go on the record. I would like to go on the record, 8.25 p.m., the superintendent of schools, just made a comment to me, trustee, in my official capacity, that this is my first time being a school board member. And before I say something that may get me in trouble, just know that that type of activity and behavior from my superintendent is not warranted and will not be accepted. It's subordination. And we pay your salary. And I didn't say insubordination, but that's what I believe it is. So, though it may be my first time being a school board um, member, best believe it won't be my last time. It's your first time being a superintendent, and your actions will determine what will come in the future. Watch yourself. Politics on the five-member school board was notoriously vicious and fractured, with tension stoked by the growing Latino majority in the community. The split reflected in seesawing power on the five-member elected board that was hard to follow, with costly legal sparring between opposing camps. While one majority hired Shimon Warrenker, soon after a different faction won control. But before the changeover would take place, Warrenker's supporters on the board ousted opposing trustee Lamont Johnson for allegedly breaking board rules in an election. His removal kept Warrenker supporters in control of district policies and purse strings, but launched open war. This is the meeting of the board. You don't get the right to direct what happens here. So Hemstead for Hemstead is a local coalition of parents, it's concerned parents, educators, Hemstead staff, past and present, um, and just local advocates for, you know, either people that had children that went to Hemstead School District and see some changes they're not happy with. So unhappy with new school leadership, the grassroots group Hemstead for Hemstead hired this law firm to lobby and speak publicly for them. The group's founder, often speaking for himself, loudly at school board meetings. This is still America and the First Amendment gives me that right. Thomas Parsley is a convicted level three registered sex offender and former Hempstead School Board trustee, a fixture on a landscape blotted with bitter infighting for more than a decade. Court records reveal he also faced welfare fraud charges, but pled guilty to falsifying business records. Despite a criminal record, Parsley regularly calls the shots from the audience at school board meetings. Their goal is to really send a loud message to um, Albany about their displeasure with what happened with the now majority school board um, and how they feel like the election and the results of that election were really um, hijacked. And since then, it has just been utter chaos. You know what? This board 
stinks. You really don't want to hear what the people have to say. And now with a front row seat, retired educator Dr. Jack Beerworth assigned to Hempstead as a so-called distinguished educator in a highly unusual move by the New York State Education Commissioner to pull the district out of its downward spiral. His $30,000 a month job to conduct an intensive assessment of the chronically troubled district to be the eyes and ears of the state. Beerworth would take it all in as Warren Kerr was taking it on the chin. The district's decades of neglect was now his to answer to. We have teachers here who basically are here for a paycheck. Don't give a fly about educating the students in their classroom and what's being done to reduce the class size. Across the hall, there may be 32. It's killing our students. They're not graduating. They're, and if they do, they're going to college and coming back in one year. I have to look over my shirt and show that every two seconds in the hallway is like, this person going to touch me? Like, who wants to live in constant oh fear? God. I don't want to live in fear. The equipment is falling apart. Uh, I honestly don't have a saxophone to play. Our football field is a mess. Our bleachers are falling apart. Literally, we have poles and planks that are falling off and it's embarrassing for me as a student. Water is dripping, it's a mess. How am I supposed to learn in an environment where my cloud is already overcrowded and I have a ceiling that's leaking yellow, I'm scared of rats and all types of animals and rodents running around. I just want to say I'm as outraged as you are over this. I'm telling you this is a high priority and I saw what you're saying and I felt the outrage that you have and we're going to need to prioritize in how we spend our resources because there are so many areas of the district that in that kind of disrepair and it didn't happen over a period of a month or two months, it's been happening over many years and decades. So but it's time to change it. I too want to know what the plan is. We can't get our community together, but yet we hold a meeting on Sunday when people are in church and enjoying their families. The Sunday listening tour didn't help. Randy is one of the most powerful women in the United States of America. She represents over 1.7 million workers. Shimon said to me, okay, when is the first day you can actually spend a couple of hours? And this was the first day. Now, was Sunday? Look, I, you know, my, my, my partner's a rabbi. And I know you don't ever want to mess with church or synagogue. So it's a terrible day. 3.30 on a Sunday. Warren Kerr's Blue Ribbon transition team was supposed to help draft his four-year plan, but Weingarten spoke to an audience of mostly empty seats. He created these amazing schools in New York City where they're completely different than many other schools. They cost a lot more money, and kids in those schools are thriving, and teachers love it. I know that if we can help people create a trust and a sense of shared community, that we can do this in Hempstead. Shimon is a, a real, uh, I think, national treasure. A primary and secondary education is uh, the heartbeat of the country. Doing that well, most everything else is going to fall into place. If you're not, uh, the whole society has extremely serious uh, problems. You have to have real degrees or real graduation, having really gone to class, having really learned. You can't do it by fiddling with uh, statistics. Hempstead has had a history for close to 60 years and we need a way out. And gathering the best minds who are coming to lend their support and expertise this is what this district needs. Warren Chris, $50,000 trip to Harvard and Hofstra University to train staff and board members in mediation and leadership skills Take didn't go over well Harvard. either. And who paid for Harvard? That, that money could have went to the students. Who paid for Harvard? Who paid for those mediations in Hofstra? I don't need mediation because I was elected. Okay? This is the perfect example of not cooperating. If we can pay for room and board, but we can't make sure we don't have asbestos and mold in our buildings, heat in our schools, a proper track. Yeah, we pay for for. Don't 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 get on your soap don't get on your soapbox because if you really want to go there, we fire a, a, a principal and bring in a new principal on day one. The high school principal Warren Kerr replaced with Stephen Strawn, suspected of manipulating academic numbers and vastly underreporting student weapons confiscated. Allegations Strawn vehemently denied. Hempstead for Hempstead was now issuing a flurry of press releases via the private lobbying firm 
blasting Warren Kerr and pushing for Strawn's return. Why not give someone who was doing an excellent job a steady increase and all the state records show that the school moving in a positive direction. Why whenever there is a step in a positive direction, the carpets are ripped right underneath from the school's feet. And that's when the school and Hemstead for Hemstead is saying enough is enough. We need someone in here who's dedicated. We need someone in here who is going to make changes. We had someone in here that we saw changes. He turned around those graduation rates. It went from 37% graduation rate all the way up to 53%. How do you remove such a, a distinguished principal like Principal Strawn, who was doing all these great things, put in someone who's never been a principal before? They really want positive change within the school for the kids, for the community. They feel as if they are being robbed of their voices. The current superintendent, it seems as if there are a lot of self-serving, deceptive practices that have been going on. Things aren't adding up. It seems very fishy. The change has not been positive because there's been consistent, ongoing riots within, you know, in the school. And yes, Hempstead has a history of fights on school grounds, but not to this level. And there's a lack of leadership, because if there was leadership, then there would be at least a slowdown of these fights that are going on. Um, but yeah, it's, it's sad. Hello, I can't shake your hand for religious reasons, so I hope you don't mind. I can shake gentlemen's hands, right? But for girls, I can't. The, the, the rules, I think, are good rules, so that I can stay married to, with my wife. Warren Kerr had children, now yeah. embedded himself in the high school. It's always Hempstead High School. I did here. Hempstead High School is only known about for fighting. What impresses me is how you guys are navigating the challenges. We have finished reviewing all our senior students. Some of the data is heartbreaking. I questioned the validity of the data coming out of the high school. I scrubbed the data and we had over 250 no-shows for years. They haven't been attending school, and they were still kept on our rolls. The district Warren Kerr says he uncovered was improperly collecting state funding for more than a third of the senior class that had dropped out, and three quarters had no chance of graduating on time. Unless you dig deep into the data, you won't know what the problems are things go missing. And in this case, children have gone missing. And we cannot afford that. And it is heartbreaking. We know right now that they don't stand a chance of graduating high school. And there's no program for them. We're going to create programs for the students we know will not graduate high school, like pre-GED, GED, vocational programs. Do something for them this year so that they're not lost. This is tragic. If you look at the guidance counselors, I mean, they're overwhelmed. If some of the guidance counselors have over 400 students, I don't, you become ineffective at that point. The village of Hempstead, 18 miles from Manhattan, surrounded by some of the richest communities in the nation with some of the most respected public schools. Garden City to its north graduates 97 percent. Uniondale to the east, with demographics much like Hempstead, graduates 78 percent. But Hempstead collecting healthy levels of commercial taxes, with more than half of its budget provided through state aid, spends the average per pupil for New York but graduates less than half that of its neighbors. Persistently listed among just a handful of school systems of its size in the U.S., other than juvenile detention centers and special needs schools, that fails to graduate the majority of its seniors. There are real burning issues. And, the, and, the, and this district has been burning. And of course, who do they want to burn at the stake is the Jew. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and that's okay. And look, all I'm saying to you is that, uh, is, all I'm saying to you is we have to figure out how we all work together for the benefit of the children. If we keep blaming each other, the kids are the ones who will suffer. And here on the front lines. <laughs> moments like this came with the territory. <laughs> Thank you.
Take him to the dean's office. Welcome to Hempstead. Let's go. Welcome to Hempstead High School. All right. Come, let's go. It's painful to see something like this happen. You know, this is not the way a school should be. I remember thinking it was a little odd. I didn't have anything on my calendar. Principal Klein recalls an hour before that fight, he was summoned out of the high school to a meeting in the district office. Someone again called to say, make sure Mr. Klein is at AO at 11 a.m. Now that's very strange. It's common to get a call if you're late, okay? But not a reminder 25 minutes or so after the initial call. But when he got there, there was no well, meeting. I said to Dr. Warnocker, something's not right. It was a setup. A student told one of the high school administrators that there was going to be a fight, seventh period, and that's when I knew the whole thing was staged. I believe that the objective for this group of people who were loyal to the former principal was to create chaos at the high school level, great mayhem, um, so that I would be removed and he'd be brought back. It seems as though people in power are more concerned with maintaining those positions of power than they are concerned with serving the needs of students. I believe it's about patronage, that um, you know, it's, it's your friends that get hired, um, not necessarily the most qualified candidate. Because I've seen too much, seen too many people I knew personally who did not belong in positions and yet they got them. A lot of the teachers are getting positions uh, based purely on nepotism. There are a lot of teachers that are hired that are church members of administrators or board members. Patronage, a long suspected open secret in the district. Jobs doled out to instructors who are uncertified in subjects they're teaching. Many times the elected school board member is there for the purpose of hiring and firing people that she has control over. And for many years it was uh, the board president in Hempstead who was controlling that situation. And, but the board now is still very um, nepotistic. And um, I think the kids, unfortunately, and it's really a tragic situation. For 13 years, I've watched wonderful kids go down the tubes um, and, and go into a chasm. We want to go to college. We got the knowledge. A scathing 2004 audit found uncontrolled, inappropriate, and wasteful spending, inaction, and infighting. A decade later, another audit found unqualified staffers. A school board assistant paid nearly $95,000 with no known duties. Hempstead for Hempstead was now in an open campaign against Superintendent Warrenker, zeroing in on his use of his own nonprofit New American Initiative to guide the district. Warrenker openly named the foundation in his contract as a partner in reform and stepped down as CEO when Hempstead hired him, but its $450,000 price tag, plus four master teachers he hired to mentor other staff, set off alarms. My taxes are $20,000. $20,000, and we're sitting here paying young kids to be master teachers $135,000 a year. Come on now. We're giving your company contracts, blatant conflict of interest. The glaring conflict of interest is so glaring that it is blindsided the entire school. Someone who's coming in contingent on the fact that his foundation gets a half a million dollar contract and his entire staff gets hired at $135,000 a piece, there's a problem. We can't just give out a half a million dollars and say we hope for the best here. It's not a school district that can do that. Since it was such an emergency to get you here, 
it seems to me like it should have been an emergency That's right. for you all to have a plan for this community. Him bringing in the New American Initiative was part of his contract. It was very clear in his contract that he was going to withdraw from having any financial interest and that he was bringing them in along with Harvard University and other organizations to try and help the Hempstead School District. The pushback on this issue makes no political, makes no social, makes no educational, and makes no professional sense. How has your welcome been? I have a stack here of, I think, 11 press releases in six weeks that have been issued from the group Hempstead for Hempstead. It's not a very warm welcome, that's for sure. <laughs> the reality is anything that will institute a kind of change from the past can upset a lot of people. They're going to throw everything that they can um, real or imagined, and in a single-minded effort to make sure that I don't continue doing the work that uh, we're doing. I'm not here in a blame game. This is not, I, I just want to make sure we figure this out together as a community to help our kids move forward. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome back Trustee Johnson to the Board of Education. Five months into Superintendent Warrenker's contract, the balance on the board shifted yet again, with New York State's Commissioner of Education reinstating ousted trustee Lamont Johnson, who she ruled was denied due process. The new majority was now stacked three to two against Dr. Warrenker. I know for a fact the so-called majority of the board are for the children. We're putting the children first. That's our main objective for the students to do well in the Hempstead School District. Trustee Johnson? Yes. Trustee Gates? Yes. Trustee Stewart? Yes. In their first order of business... Resolved effective immediately. The law firm of Razor and Kniff PC is hereby terminated from representing the Hempstead Junior Free School District. The law firm Warren Kerr had asked to investigate suspected fraud in the district's food services. Why was that important to do so quickly and do it all? I have no comment on that. Also terminated, the contract with Warren Kerr's New American Initiative and his planning blasted as too slow. You had June, July, August to have a plan for the children. You make over $250,000 a year. We don't need you to call in all your cronies, Randy Weimer. She don't get paid here. She don't work here. We're not interested in her solution. We need a plan from you. You've done nothing since you've been here. Also fired days before Christmas, his four master teachers. Shall no longer be employees of the district, effective 12 17 For the record, I'd like to say that I think this is the wrong way for the district to, to conduct its business. The New American Initiative for $450,000 was not a budgeted item for the 2017-2018 school year. The master teachers, the four master teachers for $135,000 was also not budgeted for the 2017-2018 school year. And what that causes is when you have people vote, they vote for a budget and we have to go by the, the budget they voted for. You will answer the question of the citizen or we're not moving. She wants to know which one of y'all is not to What's the harm in answering the question, Shannon? With Warren Kerr under attack, he went on the offensive posting an unprecedented open letter on the district website accusing the new board majority of sabotaging his efforts to fix the district. If the adults are fighting, we can't help the children. We can't stop things midway and say, well, no, we don't feel like having this program. Like the New American Initiative was doing tremendous work so that we could help reorganize our schools, reorganize our contracts so that we can improve student outcomes. In fact, I put in the contract when I was being hired that I would have to be able to use organizations that I've worked for in the past, such as Harvard, the New American Initiative, the New York City Leadership Academy, that I wanted to partner with these folk. And I put in the contract that I would not benefit financially in any way, shape, or form from these organizations. And I have not. He also informed the board he was talking to law enforcement.
every person in the Hempstead School District and everybody else looking from the outside needs to be suspect about all these firings, about all the turning out of individuals who are looking under the rocks where there may be very big concerns about uh, issues of, of potential corruption. The reality is uh, there is deep and endemic corruption in the district. And it is very important that we work collaboratively to root out the corruption because the money's not going to the kids. We're one of the lowest paid districts in, in Nassau County, and yet we have one of the largest budgets in Nassau County. Okay, where's the money going? And so this is why uh, the special investigators that we had hired to, to start rooting out the corruption were very important. The fact that the board let them go is critical. They don't want him there. They are just preventing him to do his job to accuse him of failure. Hempstead, uh, unfortunately, has a reputation. And not Dr. Wanaka, please don't put that out there. You know, as a leader, as a leader of people, you have a responsibility to see the problem but come with a solution. You don't, you don't get to constantly give us a commentary on what we're not. We don't want to hear that. At some point, you have to stop. You have to stop using the negative of why people don't want to come to Hempstead. You came to Hempstead. You didn't have a problem. Stop for those people who want to come. I don't want to hear that out of you ever again. Tonight is the last night you used that commentary. It's not fair. We're not going to have it anymore. It is so disrespectful to the people that are paying your salary every month. Not many people want to come to Hempstead to be abused. And, and I just want to share with you. Uh, I want to share with you. I will stand up for the children. I will do whatever it takes to help the children. And I don't mind taking the abuse. However, I want to share with you that is a reality that is happening. Stop it! You're causing it! You're allowing it! You're allowing it! With the cat calling and all the all the all the name calling, I'm going to share with you. Not many people want to be able to do this. And what I'm saying to you is, if we collaborate, if we have civil if we, if we talk things through, if instead of being a blame game, we try to help one another, we can move the district forward to help the children. This is why I want to say, those that were on the board originally had the majority and they did what they wanted to and they shoved the superintendent down our community's throat. They have disrespected us on every level. If you create that kind of atmosphere, like in my home, I tell my children, if I speak to you with respect, you give respect, you get respect. They had the majority, they felt that they didn't have to respect us. I believe that he can do a good job, but you can't make it personal. He's making it personal when he brought his own company in to do the work, when he came in with this master teacher program, I do believe in mentoring, but I, and I believe that those teachers can help our other teachers, but it shouldn't be your company. I heard you calling the superintendent a racist. Yes. Do you truly believe he's a racist? When you disrespect us to the level that he has done, to me that's a form of racism. When you come in and you pimp us out the way he has, that's a form of racism. You cannot come into this community, or any community, and raise their budget over a million dollars from what we as taxpayers voted on last year. You cannot come and do that and it's okay. That's not the way it goes. So with the, with the level of disrespect, you don't hear us, couldn't care less of how we feel about anything. You come in here with Randy Weingard and hold a meeting on a Sunday, your Sabbath is Saturday and Friday evening. I have to respect yours, but you have no respect for mine. All that is to me just adds up to racism. And I have Jews in my family, so it has nothing to do with his culture. I'm used to his culture, I'm very familiar with it. But you can't raise yours and step on mine. Our house is on fire. Our school is our house that is burning down. We don't have time for you to come here and take six months to a year to come up with a plan. We need you to come and hit the ground running. He's been a really polarizing factor. He proved himself to be divisive. Most of the people who are here are really looking for a leader and a superintendent who is going to bring vision, who is going to bring a strategic focus, who is going to have the ability to pull people together instead of someone who's dividing people. 
Benjamin Wanaka is placed on administrative LOA with pay for 60 days. Divisions clearly etched in the 3-2 vote that night. The new board majority suspending Warrenker, barring him from schools and hiring investigators to look into his actions. And to underscore a sense of victory. The fact of the matter is it violates my contract and violates the law. I think uh, part of the reason is uh, the open letter that was sent out uh, on Sunday, uh, sharing what's really going on in the district, to let go of a superintendent uh, seven months into his tenure, right, um, in the middle of the school year, requires a drastic reason. And quite frankly, there is no such drastic reason. This board has shown its true colors, because if indeed they had any interest in furthering um, what needs to happen in the Hempstead School District, they wouldn't suspend him. They try and find a common ground and work with him. A Harvard trained educator has come in with a, a, a broom to try and clean house and people want to remain in a situation that is, that is strewn with problems. He found it necessary to speak to outside governmental agencies, including law enforcement agencies, about what was going on in the Hempstead School District. And after that, and after his open letter, they then come down on him like a wall of bricks. Nothing could be more clear in terms of retaliation to try and silence someone that has pulled the sheets off a bed of vipers. If you want progress, you must have change. People don't want change. They want to be where they are. And the real question is why? Why is it so comfortable for you to be in this place where more than 50% of the children in the high school are not going to graduate? Here this man is trying to do what's right, trying to reform the schools, the whole district, and this is how they treat him. Dr. Warnica did not have to come here. He was fine where he was. He didn't have to come here. You know, but he saw a need, and he saw a calling, and he said, I'm gonna come and I'm gonna help the children of Hempstead. To say that this man is here and he doesn't want the best for the children, it's a lie. He had a philosophy. He's never run a district. Um, in any district, no less Hempstead, and there's a different relationship when somebody has to deal with their board to get things done. And so you can have the, the most educated um, uh, administrator in the world if they haven't had the experience of working with the board and knowing how to handle the board. It, it becomes really difficult, and I think that's that's what happened here. And and he got caught in the crossfire. They had pledged before he even started that he would be thrown out. He wasn't given a chance. They they definitely didn't want him. He was not what they were looking for. He was not um, anything close to what they would have accepted. He's too bright, and it's very hard to intimidate somebody if they're too bright. The same week Warren Kerr was shelved, distinguished educator Jack Beerworth issued his recommendations, a long list of directives to revamp nearly every aspect of the long-struggling school district. Among the bleak stats in his report, decades of chronic financial mismanagement, 20 business superintendents in 21 years, millions of dollars in missed grants, millions spent on law firms that charged excessive fees, and a failure to follow recommendations of repeated audits. Warren Kerr, he wrote, had been drawn into the board's clear divisions, his master teachers putting undue strain on the district budget. The state gave the board just weeks to come up with a plan of action and a stern face-to-face -face ultimatum. Are you alarmed by what you see going on in this district? Of course we are. That's why we have put a distinguished educator in Hempstead and we feel like that is helping us to move the district. We're aware of the changes that need to occur and we want to make sure that, that the um, trustees are equally as seriously concerned. We are at a point that given the report and given the sense of urgency that we want to make sure that the board understands by both of us being here that this is critical. The message was a no-nonsense message. 
and we have to get our act together and we're going to get our act together. We need the state. You sent all these kids here, our, stu our, our buildings are overcrowded. We have students sitting on the floor. We have students eating lunch on the floor. We have gang violence left and right every day. We need the state here. We need all governing bodies to pull together and let's get, get, it, get our act together for the students. It's, it's no shame in having the state here. Where have they been? We, we need them. A familiar call here in Hempstead. Who's going to step up to put out the fire? And that's the question we're dealing with today. Do you want the state to step in? I think the state needs to step in. I, I don't think we have a choice. The echoes of calls for state help now reaching New York's governor. We asked him what the state will do. If you don't have a real, credible, immediate plan for correction, then the state should come in and take over the school. A plan must be developed in a very, very short time, in the next three, four weeks. Um, they don't have to do everything that's there, but they have to come up with a plan of how they're going to do it. If they don't, uh, this, the commissioner does have uh, some power. To remove elected board members. Right, the commissioner does. And under the distinguished educator law that's in, the next step would be to replace the board. Uh, and that can be done. When the board is dysfunctional, uh, and because of the nature of the how people get elected and why they're elected, um, I don't see any way out unless there is some kind of different governance. Because so many people are on the payroll, you're saying. That's right. And, and when you have elections on Long Island, in, in school board elections, where 10 to 15 percent of the people vote. To get those 10 or 15 percent of the people and you have a big staff that you've hired for the district, those people can certainly get the majority of the 10 or 15 percent. And so a lot of it has to do with not just the governance, but the fact that the people of the district don't care enough to vote. If people from, from Hempstead don't see what's going on and make some changes in how they vote, then we, you know, that's another indication that you really need to have some other form of governance. All mention of Warrenker was now purged from the district website. His open letter and district plans wiped. Next to get the boot, his high school principal. I was terminated by the Board of Education last night, effective immediately. No reason was offered. I think. The district is rooted in corruption that has uh, persisted for, for many years and the people who've been brought in to, to, to make positive changes are now being eliminated while the people who've been here for many years uh, retain their jobs. In Warrenker's place, the board majority tapped this longtime district administrator and returned Stephen Strawn as high school principal. Unfortunately, the way that the former the, the principal, Dr. Strawn, was released um, from duties was, was improper, and I believe the best thing to do was to bring him back to restore order. The community at heart is in favor of the decisions that were made last night. So, this community is not ran by New York Communities for Change. It's not ran by Mr. Frederick Brewington and his offices. It's ran by Hempstead. We are Hempstead Tigers, and that's what we do. You got to have love for Hempstead to understand. We had improvements with Dr. Strong. But newly released 2017 graduation numbers by New York State would show the opposite. There was no increase to 53% under Strawn, but actually a drop back to 37%. And the state would now send investigators to review if credit hours on transcripts were real. Even his own credentials were now in question. Chelsea University in England on Strawn's resume, where he lists a doctoral degree with high honors, was, according to the governing body of higher education in the UK, not accredited. It was clear that Stephen Strong's doctorate uh, was bogus. The school that he received his, his certification from is actually a, a degree mill. As a school board trustee, Melissa Figueroa chose Warren Kerr as superintendent to turn around the district, but then she was voted out. <laughs>
Often shouted down at school board meetings, Figueroa called for the forensic audit of district finances going back 10 years. But before auditors could get their hands on records stored at this vacant school, fire broke out ruled suspicious by the fire marshal. Fire destroys a school district's vital records, and tonight there are questions as to whether the fire was set on purpose. When you have the same folks who have been running the district for generations, we have to, we, we owe it to ourselves to take a closer look at the record keeping of the district. Follow the money trail. Who are the people who are responsible for the demise of this district? There's, there's blood on the streets and the children are suffering. The high school principal whom I removed, I found that he was uh, fudging numbers, both uh, for a number of weapons that were being brought to the school, as well as academic records. And yet, not only did they bring him back, they granted him tenure. And they paid him for all the time he wasn't working. I believe that the only reason why they brought him back was because he was going to make the high school look good. The numbers are not going to be real, though. And that's criminal for the children. So there's a lawsuit to reinstate me in my position as superintendent of schools of Hempstead uh, School District. What's at stake here is, is seriously whether or not Hempstead is going to change its ways or not. And that's where we are. This is a crossroads. I have never in my entire professional career, and I have visited schools in almost every continent of the world, I have never seen what I have seen in Hempstead that students who fail algebra are promoted into geometry and who fail geometry are promoted into trigonometry. I have never seen this. It just goes to show the pattern of what happens in Hempstead. Anytime anything good starts, they try to change it and it turns into something bad. They're trying to hide something. This man came with a plan to help these children that they haven't had for years. And now they want to get rid of him. So what are they hiding? That's all I want to know. What are they hiding? I believe the judge will make a just decision. That's all I'm able to say at this time. I want to remind the community at the school board now, the majority, as you like to say, are working diligently with the distinguished educator, working diligently with our acting superintendent to make sure that we address those concerns. So I do take exception as a member of the community, being told, one, that we don't like Dr. Warnocker because he's a Jewish, but he's, he's of the Jewish faith. Uh, I take exception to the fact that, too, he claims that someone from the community has set a building worth, with records on fire. In fact, exception to the fact that we could find money to pay for everybody who formerly worked for his company that he started, but we can't find money to make sure we address the facilities issues, address the money to make sure that we have textbooks for our students. But then again, I have the heart of Hempstead, and no matter what anybody say, Hempstead is okay with the decisions that was made by the board. Is that really the best use of uh, school district funds now to investigate Dr. Warren Kerr? We have to do what we have to do. Um, but I'll tell you one thing, the best use of funds is not paying $450,000 that was never budgeted to some people who used to work for him in a company that he started and that he was the CEO. The fate of the school district was for now in the hands of a federal judge. Court documents offered a scathing view of the district he was tasked with turning around. The board majority offered up its own sworn statements. Warren Kerr was not suspended because he spoke out, but because of his questionable hiring of master teachers and his use of the New American Initiative. They claim it was a possible act of criminal bid rigging. The suspension needed, they argued, to investigate other areas of possible improper, illegal, unethical, or inappropriate conduct, including Warren Kerr's failure to implement a violence suppression and facilities maintenance plan, failure to submit a grant application on time, and his failure to explain to the board why he terminated Principal Strawn. Why do I think he shouldn't prevail? He's not here for the children, and that's what it should be all about. Why do you think he did come to Hempstead? That's the question. 
And hey, they gave him the checkbook to the district. Anyone that gave him a contract that like that, gave him a checkbook, an open checkbook to the district. And as taxpayers, we're not standing for it. Tell me what has he done in seven months other than rape this district financially and I'll keep quiet. Tell me two things that he has done other than feed companies that he either founded or is a part of and I'll keep quiet and that's where I end. Complete lies. Complete lies. Complete lies. He's no. here for the children. He's always been yep. here for the children. That's okay. why we brought him in. They are lying. So everything you see this man doing with his compassion is for the children. So everybody should be behind him. This district has been raped for how many years? 25? Decades. 30? Decades. They didn't say anything about that. Right. They, they didn't say anything about right. that and, and did nothing for the children. Exactly. Yes. He came with a plan for the children. Listen, I believe nobody's completely honest except my God in, in heaven. But I'm going to tell you something. He came with a plan for these children and he had a lot of help. Yes. He really wanted to right. turn things around for these children. But they've had the opportunity for years. And they exactly. never did anything. A 37 and a half percent graduation rate? Right. They shouldn't even open their mouths. Things didn't go Warren Kerr's way in court. The judge denied a temporary order to return him to his job and his claim his rights had been violated. Today, you know, we lost a battle in an a ongoing war for the children who continue to suffer in Hempstead. Your reaction to the decision, Lamar? I think it was a fair decision by the judge. He looked through the facts and he made a just decision. The intent to get him out? I have no comment on the status of the superintendent. There's always a disappointment uh, when you, you, you lose at one level, but this is only one level. We did this, one, hoping the court would see what was going on, which he did, and he commented on that. But two, that we might be able to raise the gambit of this conversation in a place that wasn't uh, in a in a in a auditorium where people were being shouted down and told to hit the road jack. I'm especially disappointed for the children and the teachers and the parents of the school district of Hempstead because I, I I've heard their cries and they're still calling me and asking when I'm going to return. What we've been dreaming for and hoping for to come to Hempstead finally had walked through the door in June. And then all of a sudden, it was just taken from us. Children can't read. Children can't add, subtract. They can't multiply. Some of them can't even write script. But he wanted to know, and these are the things that we told him. The majority of the teachers felt like, okay, there's a chance that Hempstead can turn around. We can actually make a difference in their lives. And then change was taken right, was swept right from underneath us. As the board plotted ahead with the required plan of action, civility was not required at board meetings. This week has nothing to hide. The district should not act this way. The state criticized much of their corrective plan as inadequate, but progress came in the form of a new business and security consultants, new vocational classes, and a community bond vote to build a new elementary school. The board clashed next on whether to continue to fund the forensic audit, which was raising red flags about payroll practices. 129 former employees still getting paid. 500 employees collecting checks as vendors and unusual trends like duplicate payments and checks written on weekends. The forensic auditors um, are, are finding that uh, there are a lot of employees who also have shell companies um, who are benefiting from the students. Having the truth come out is not one of the things that uh, uh, is in the interest of many of the members in the community. It is criminal what is taking place in Hempstead. So far, it's the tip of the iceberg. It's just to me a way of us not um, rooting out the fraud, waste, and abuse. The board was now moving funds out of teacher salaries to pay lawyers investigating the New American Initiative. The same lawyers the Distinguished Educators report claimed had overcharged the district plus paying $5,000 a month for public relations to the same firm that represented Hempstead for Hempstead, and Dr. Warrenker sitting out his suspension in his Brooklyn home. This is not how a school district should operate. The teachers work hard, and it seems that they're going in circles. 
it's freed from on top. This has been going on for years. There's no systems in place. It just continues to spiral downward. And we need a change. The state doesn't seem to care. They don't seem to want to step in and help. They just seem to have a blind eye. It's sad that these children are, are not getting the education that they're entitled to. They're investigating me. Um, quite frankly, uh, this is when uh, the thief, so to speak, to, to make sure that nobody's looking at the thief, says, oh, look, there's the thief, right? And pointing at an innocent bystander so that the attention is placed elsewhere. Now, the reality is um, I've done nothing wrong. Um, I, I've come in with best of intentions. To rob from the kids, it's the opposite of the reason why I came. Look, the history of the crookedness in Hempstead far preceded me. I didn't institute the crookedness that's so now, taking place there. I was coming to remove it. That's why I was removed. He didn't look like the rest of the population. His religion was different. It bothered me about the fact that people looked at him differently than they would have somebody else who did look like them. I have a deep-rooted faith that we are here to create a heaven on earth. That's our mission in life. Whichever way it is that we have to do it. And when one walks into Hempstead and sees a hell created on earth for our children, our mission is to change that. If my work is done in Hempstead, then I just have to believe that um, something good will come of this, that good will um, overcome the evil that, that exists. And all that is just a false narrative, claims the board majority, by those who don't share their love for Hempstead. We've been working together to move this district along. There's been other people who've been working against the district and want to see the district fail, and I take exception to that. Exception taken uh, also the to the distinguished educators' latest uh, words of I caution. There are a lot of things that I would say that are still of concern. Trust me, if the state want to take this district over and remove this board, when we get it back, I will run and I will win again. Thank you. Everyone does not have to get along, but I can say myself personally, I have not been disrespectful to any board member. I've handled myself as a gentleman. Board does not have to get along. This is a, de a democracy. That's why it's five members on the board. So the majority, whoever the majority is, I didn't make the majority who it is. The people voted. whole narrative about 30 years of corruption, nepotism, and things of that nature. Guess where I was 30 years ago? I graduated in 1989, so guess where I was 30 years ago? Right here in the same school. The past few years, we've had several students that have been accepted to Ivy League schools. Okay? We have board members, we have other people from the community. They don't get that information out. Yes. Leadership that's supposed to believe in the school, okay? The leadership of the school is, be, is for education. It's not to play make believe that they're attorney general or prosecutor and anything else. They can do an investigation all they want because when Mike Johnson's hands is clean, Randy Stiff's hands is clean, and Dr. Gates' hands are clean. So whatever investigation that may involve, whoever may involve, I have no problem with the investigation. But I will say it here, and I'm not saying a, a name of anyone, but I want NAI part of that investigation. It's a, a negative narrative. Yes. If you don't believe in the students, if you believe Hempstead is so bad, you should not be here. What about believing the numbers? New York State in May released its review of student transcripts. It found before Warren Kerr's arrival, the high school highly exaggerated the number of students taking the minimum number of credits. Only 57% of 11th graders, not the 90% the district had reported. 
The findings could result in the appointment of an independent receiver to run Hempstead schools. What is not a false narrative, say teachers, is a school system in the running for last place in the nation in turning out graduates. These children that we have are, are capable of so much more. If they were just given the guidance, given the support, given the structure that all children deserve, especially here in the United States where education is free and it's a right that we all have. They're being cheated by a system that's in place that turns a blind eye to egregious acts such as passing a child along just to get them out of the building. The end of this story, a cliffhanger. I hope that, that good will prevail over the darkness that has fallen upon the district. And I, and I also hope that we will so do what we're supposed to do, what we all committed ourselves to do, which was to educate students to be, become productive members of society. The cliffhanger is this. There are two unknowns right now. Obviously, uh, what is going to happen with me vis-a-vis -vis the district? And there are still a lot of good guys out there, and those good people are going to make sure that they hold these folk accountable and that the right thing is done for the kids.